to drive predictions and ultimately to optimize their operations. Um, so if you, if you start with the flight deck, it all really starts with the AID or aircraft interface device. Um, the AID makes connectivity possible. Think of it like a, an onboard router for real-time data access. Um, so this is connectivity at the edge that can be used in countless ways to get access to critical data. For example, integrating aircraft's health and, and position reporting. The next thing I'd, I'd highlight in the flight deck um, is our product called Flight Hub. This is our electronic flight bag or EFB application. This is really all about pilot efficiency. Um, what it does is it aggregates major processes um, and data for pilot use. So think pre-flight things like weather or flight plans and then post-flight analysis, um, understanding fuel burn and things like that. Um, the last example is uh, a new product that we have called Flight Profile Optimizer. Um, this is integrated with Flight Hub, which I just talked about. Um, and FPO is really a sustainability product. It delivers real-time um, route optimization alternatives, so deviations from the planned flight path, um, so that you can make decisions in real time to adjust to save time and to save fuel, overall reducing CO2. Um, what we've seen in trials is that you could um, get about a 1% annual savings on fuel um, per year through use of FPO. All right, next I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about um, airline operations. Um, so here we're really bringing together um, the power of our um, inherent products on the aircraft and all of the billions of data points um, with a goal of driving more efficient, um, more reliable operations for our customers. A few examples I'd highlight here. The first one is Essentia. Essentia is our prognostics and health monitoring solution known as PHM. What it does is it, it monitors aircraft component performance with the goal of essentially turning unscheduled maintenance events into scheduled maintenance events. So um, helping to minimize the flight delays and cancellations that we've all been feeling here recently. Um, Essentia is in use on more than 3,000 tails right now across 60 airlines. Um, last thing, you may have heard that late last year we acquired FlightAware. Um, so FlightAware is the industry's most accurate predictive ETAs um, and real-time flight tracking uh, data source. And we're finding now that we've had FlightAware on the team that we're using this data in countless ways to drive more efficient operations. In general, FlightAware has been used by airlines for quite some time um, to optimize their operations. So think highly predictive, highly accurate gate arrival times, and using that to drive tighter turnarounds, um, better on-time departures, and fewer delays. So that's what FlightAware is known for. But we're using it across Collins and, and really across all of RTX um, to think about how it can improve our products and our operations. So we're partnering closely with our wheels and brakes team um, to use the data to better understand um, break aware and improve those lifetimes um, for our customers. First of all, this is nothing new. Uh, Pratt & Whitney for 20 plus years has been uh, getting data from uh, the aircraft where, that our engines lift and analyzing that data. We'll talk more about uh, how we do that. Over 10,000 engines uh, right now we're monitoring data on and we have for both the Pratt & Whitney Legacy product uh, and also the Gear Turbo Fan Engine product. So that's what we're doing. We look at parameters, things like vibration, things like exhaust gas temperature, things like the pressure and temperature across the different modules, uh, the inlet and outlet of the modules, and we learn things from that. And we develop algorithms that tell us what those parameters and how those parameters change, what that means. Uh, we have a number that we've had out there for a while where we believe that for operators that use this service, we're saving about $100,000 a year per aircraft. And that comes from things like um, avoiding unplanned downtime, or if there is going to be downtime, making sure that that happens at the right location where they have the right technicians, the right tooling to do the maintenance the right way. Um, of course, the exciting thing is what we're doing next, transition to what we call full flight data. So with full flight data, instead of just getting a few snapshots uh, throughout the flight envelope, you're actually continuously getting data that's being collected from the engine, and it's also 
not just data more frequently, but it's different types of data. So I mentioned earlier, I talked about the pressure and temperature at the inlet and outlet of the engine modules. We're now collecting that data throughout the engine uh, module. We're looking at things like oil uh, levels and things of that nature. So it's more informative, a lot more data. And that data is a gold mine of potential value in terms of the, these additional data points as, as we learn to analyze it. So that's the data piece. If you go to the next chart, then the question is, you know, what do you do with the data? And so, um, you know, we've got 24/7. Did the chart change? Okay, good. We've got 24/7 uh, coverage. We've got folks uh, throughout the globe um, that, for every single flight, are looking at what happened in that flight, running it through their algorithms, and then, as appropriate as necessary, communicating with customers to, to let them know if there's anything that they should know. And even if there's not something urgent that uh, they see that requires attention, we use that data to help us inform the maintenance plans. So you know, you've got this, uh, we've been doing it for a long time and we continue to advance these tools, maximizes engine performance, time on wing, and it gets us to get the maintenance plans and the work scoping for the engines to be optimized so that we get the customer exactly what they need to get their full intervals. Um, so full flight data, is of course going to give us a step change to, to those insights. It's really going to allow us to take those analytics to the next level and get much more powerful um, predictive maintenance solutions for our customers. So that's kind of what Pratt's been up to. In the next chart, I'll just talk a little bit about this new um, uh, collaboration with Collins. So this is a full flight data delivery agreement. Um, and what this does, and we're very excited about it, it kind of allows us to combine, you've got thousands of sensors and many different systems on the aircraft that Collins is responsible for, and you combine that with the full flight engine data that now Pratt & Whitney uh, is evolving uh, and advancing. When you look at those two things together, that's a very powerful combination for the customers. So we talk about you know streamlining uh, customer service, and that's an important piece of this. But what we're even more excited about is the greater insights that we're gonna be able to glean from all of this data more quickly than uh, we could previously. So, of course, we're sister companies. We've already been collaborating with Collins. That's nothing new. But what this does is this provides a framework for us to scale that and work together more closely than we ever have before. Uh, surveillance and network systems is a very broad-based business supporting both civil and defense applications. I try to put it in short. Uh, we work very advanced sensors uh, for situational awareness, both in the infrared electro-optical as well as radar and RF. Uh, we also provide secure communication networks in order to be able to deliver that information safely, securely, as well as secure processing so that we can process all the information, put it in the form that's most you know, that's most uh, accessible to the user and then deliver that information safely and securely. Um, so I'm going to talk today about what is a really a significant part of our business is control of the airspace, is managing the airspace. We have a number of different advanced tools and capabilities that assist in controlling, managing the airspace. We are involved in roughly two thirds of the world's air traffic. Uh, 30 different countries uh, that our solutions support. Obviously a major customer of ours is the US Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. Um, and we are particularly involved in the managing of the airspace around highly congested areas. Uh, for example, airports, uh, what we call the terminal phase of flight takeoff and landing where things obviously you know you have very closely spaced aircraft and you have you know managing the spacing and the timing of being able to get all that traffic in and out um, so a lot of our work is focused on that that terminal segment I, I try to break our solutions down into sort of four simple areas the first is around the communications so that's tying together all of the radar facilities the surveillance radars what's called the TRACONS the terminal radar control approach facilities uh, where the controllers are housed and where the airspace is actually managed. So bringing all that information together into a single secure network. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about these capabilities, but they're sort of illustrated here on this first page. The second area is one called surveillance. Uh, we are one of the world's largest providers of surveillance radars for air traffic control. We've deployed more than 900 different surveillance radars globally in 30 different countries, so a, a very active network uh, for, for situational awareness. Third area is in navigation. I'll talk a little bit about some of the advanced navigation solutions that, uh, that we develop and deliver. Um, some of it primarily focused on things like precision approach and landing uh, to manage the airspace in, again, very 
congested environments. And then the last area that I refer to is automation. If you think about all the information that we've provided today, it is a lot for a controller to be able to digest and use. Uh, you have weather information, you have traffic, you have all of the surveillance and monitoring. So in order to be able to put that in a form that is accessible to the user, doesn't overwhelm the controller with information, gives them what they need to make timely decisions. But it's really all about the safety, security, and efficiency of the air traffic control. That's really what we're here to deliver uh, through, these, through these capabilities. One thing I do want to emphasize is uh, you're already seeing today an increase in air travel. Um, it's really, uh, I think we're back to 95% pre-pandemic levels. The models all say that that's going to increase almost exponentially, you know, here in the next five, 10 years. Um, so this problem is only going to become more acute. Uh, we need to be able to safely manage the airspace. In addition, you're going to have new entrants into the airspace. Uh, I'll talk about a few in particular, the unmanned vehicles uh, that are now be, you know, becoming more prevalent. How do you deal with unmanned vehicles and controlling the unmanned vehicles and the interaction of the unmanned with the manned? A particularly challenging problem. Uh, next though, I think we're gonna see even beyond that is what we call advanced air mobility. Uh, short, sometimes folks refer to it as air taxis. Um, so now, you know, commercial air services that will be able to move us around, you know, shorter distances. And it won't be long before these are automated vehicles, uh, uncrewed, unpiloted. So how do you introduce all of that complexity into the airspace, safely manage it with all the commercial traffic that's going to increase, you know, very rapidly. So that's really what a lot of our solutions are about. And that's why you need that whole range of surveillance navigation, automation, you know, in order to be able to control and manage it. Um, but also you're going to need to modernize. Uh, the, the, the global network is definitely aging. The infrastructure is aging. Certainly we see it in the US, but I know it, it's true internationally as well. Uh, in order to handle the volume of traffic, we're going to have to improve the technology, the tools, the capabilities that are offered to the controllers. And that's really what we're about in Rivian.